Hi, my name is Ashish and we're going to start a new series wherein we will see how to develop and deploy apps on Azure Kubernetes service. In this series, we will understand how to develop, build, deploy and automatically maintain cloud native application designed to work with Azure Kubernetes service, aka also known as Azure AKS from the uh, scratch pad to the pipeline, right? So we will see how to deploy a containerized application on AKS. We will see applications and package management using the help Helm package manager tool for Kubernetes. We will see Azure Kubernetes service deployment pipeline and GitHub actions. We will deploy and manage an application by using Azure Cosmos DB and AKS. We will manage application configuration and secrets in AKS and optimize compute cost on the AKS services. So to start with, we will deploy a containerized application on Azure Kubernetes Serve. So to start with, we will deploy a containerized application on Azure Kubernetes services. So this would be uh, the part one of this. I'll try and make it very simple for all of you guys. And if I have to do it in three parts, four parts, I will try and make small videos like uh, 15 minutes or 15, 20 minutes max. And uh, if the video would exceed uh, more than 15 to 20 minutes, I will divide that into maybe two or three parts. All right. So let's say this would be the part one. All right. I specified it. This would be the part one. So the, the name of the series would be develop and deploy applications on Kubernetes. And this is the step one, wherein we deploy a containerized application on AKS. And this would be the part one of this step one. Okay. All right. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. So I logged on to the portal. So now, so let, let, let me tell you this scenario. Like, so imagine that we work for a, a growing video editing company that provides a cloud-based video rendering service. Our company is experiencing increased demand for its video rendering service because of its international expansion. They are looking for ways to scale the products to provide a better experience to all the customers. Management tasked us to assess which Azure service would improve the ability to deploy the video rendering services to meet the increased demand from the customers. So we have, we came to the conclusion that we will use AKS as a potential solution because AKS meets the requirement that allow us to deploy the app and handle the company's increased growth. But we want to understand how to deploy the app to an AKS cluster and allow the customer to access the app services, which are hosted on AKS clusters. So in this series, we will deploy in this particular video, we will deploy the AKS on the uh, Kubernetes workloads on the AKS cluster. We'll create different deployment files that will allow us to deploy and expose the application to the users. Make sure that you have a GitHub account get installed on your machine. You have a Docker account as well so that you are familiar with Docker images. You have an active as your subscription. You should know how to use Azure CLI. And basic knowledge of how to create a Docker container. All right. Great. So now we'll we'll use the architecture. So if you're not aware, let me do this. Let me explain you a little bit. Okay. All right. So we'll first of all see the Kubernetes clusters. Okay. Box. All 
All right. So we'll first of all see the Kubernetes cluster. I'll tell you the concept about it. Let me pick up this. Oh, bear with me. Alrighty. Great. So Kubernetes is based on clusters. So is totally based on clusters. Instead of having a single virtual machine, it uses several machines working as one. So these VMs are called nodes, right? So in AKS, cluster VMs are called nodes. Kubernetes is a cluster-based orchestrator. It provides the application with several benefits such as availability, monitoring, scaling, and rolling updates. So, so what are cluster nodes? So we have cluster nodes. Two types of nodes in the Kubernetes cluster that provide specific functionality. We have control plane nodes. All right. And then we have nodes. So what exactly are control plane nodes? These nodes host the cluster control plane aspects and are reserved for service that control the cluster. And your nodes, these nodes are responsible for executing custom workloads and applications. All right. Now, if you would go into details of cluster architecture, single control plane, and multiple nodes so those would be the out of the scope of this video i would request you guys to go through the official documentation from microsoft maybe you can do that before and then watch this video again to actually implement that knowledge all right so to proceed further let us quickly create a kubernetes cluster Alrighty, so I'm on to the Azure portal. I will create, you can create the cluster using the cloud shell. You can create the cluster using the portal as well. I'm sorry, the GUI, right? So let me quickly create KVRSG, this, this, okay. I'm getting this requesting a cloud shell. Okay, connecting terminal. Alrighty. Okay, so let me do this. I'm declaring a variable resource underscore group is equal to KVRST, the one that I used, and cluster underscore name is equal to Asar AKS. All right, now I will do AZ. Oh, I already have this. So if I go to Okay, it's in East US, my resource group. Wonderful. Now I will create the AKS cluster. All right, so AZ AKS create resource group. I already mentioned cluster name. I already mentioned node count would be two. I'm enabling an add-on add -on for HTTP application routing to enable the ingress controller. 
so that I can expose my application to the internet over one public IP. I am using managed identity to create this AKS cluster and I'm generating SSH keys and node VM size would be standard B2 small. Wonderful. Hit enter. Okay. Let me copy this. Okay. It is running. Let me pause the video and come back. This is done. So if I if I open up another tab and do this, okay. So if I check all the resources, I have Asar AKS, which is my cluster. Right, if you see this service and ingresses, this is the add on HTTP application and this is the cluster IP. And this is the external IP. If you click on it, this is the default application because default page because I have not deployed any application onto it, right? This is the node pools. You can add a node pool from here. You can add a node pool from CLI as well. And if you want to see the size of uh, this, the nodes that I have deployed, B2S, if you would go to this, overview, There is a resource group for MC underscore. This is the resource group. And these are right. This is the AKS VNet, Node Pool, VMSS. Two instances and it is where you can increase the number of count this is your instances AKS node pool 1 AKS this one and how you do it all right <clears throat> So this command created a new uh, cluster uh, within the resource group that I mentioned. Now the cluster will have two nodes defined by the node count parameter, which I mentioned is two. We are using only two nodes here for cost consideration for this particular exercise. And uh, standard B2S size of the VM that I'm using, the HTTP application routing add-on is enabled by the enable add-on flag. And be very cautious because HTTP application routing add-on is not recommended for production use. For production ready ingress deployments that include multiple replicas and TLS support, you have to use AKS HTTPS ingress controller. You can read more about it on the documentation. Now, if you would link with kubectl, so if I go here and I want to connect to my cluster, using the kubectl, so I would do az aks get credentials name, I would do this cluster name resource group I will again mention the variable that I defined right so this command will add an entry 
to our cube conf there is a config file under cube folder which holds all the information to access the cluster kubectl enable us to manage multiple cluster from a single command line interface so now if i do kubectl get nodes i'm sorry cube cdl get nodes would get the output these are the two nodes right so these are up for around 13 13 minutes they are ready they are they are agents right this will output two node appears now if you want to deploy an application onto your cluster okay now this part uh, we will deploy the the website as a test app onto the AKS. The website is a static website with an underlying technology. It can be used anything. It's using HTML, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever. So, so we'll have to first of all create a deployment manifest. Okay, so we create a deployment manifest file to deploy the application. The manifest file allows you to define what type of resource you want to deploy and all the details associated with that workload. So Kubernetes groups containers into logical structures called pods, which have no intelligence of their own deployments add the missing intelligence to create the applications. All right. So in the cloud shell, I would, okay, I, let me launch it. I will do touch. Sorry, I'll do touch. Deployment dot YAML. Okay, and I will do, I would open up the integrated editor inside my cloud shell, which is this. And you see here the deployment dot yaml file that I created. It is empty, of course, right? So I will add the code here. This way. So by this code, you see that I added the first two keys to tell Kubernetes the API version and the kind. So API version would be apps v1, kind would be deployment, and the name of the deployment would be Contoso website. This is, I use the name of the deployment to identify and query the deployment information when we use kubectl. So, a deployment wraps a pod. We make use of a template definition to define the pod information within the manifest file. The template is, the template is placed inside in the manifest file under the deployment specification section. All right, so I will add a spec section here as well. I updated the YAML file here and these are the specs. Template labels app conto so dot website. So pods don't have given names when they are created inside the deployments. The pods name will be the deployments name with a random ID. So I will add I add a label at the end. We add the labels key to allow deployments to find a group to find and group the pods. So right, so a pod would wrap one or more container. All pods have a specification section that allows you to define the containers inside that pod. So I would add another section to mention others, which would be this. I also added the resources uh, tab as well. I'm sorry here. Right, so I can specify the amount of resources the app is allowed to use. All right. And the last step is to define the ports. This container will expose externally through the ports key. The ports key is an array of objects, which means that a container in a pod can expose multiple ports. So I will only expose port 8, which would be this. Now I will add a selector section to define the workloads the deployments will manage. Okay. 
the selection key is placed inside the deployment specification let me add that right i will save this deployment file or i would say the manifest i will close the editor now i will have to apply this manifest i will do cube cdl apply the file name is dash f deployment dot yaml i hit enter wonderful so deployment this is created remember you see here the condosa website because i labeled it this way in the manifest file right so i would do cube cdl get deploy contoso website just to make sure that deployment was successful it is successful now if i do cube cdl get pods Contos of website pod is running wonderful. So now if I have to enable network access to this application. So by default, AKS cluster blocks, uh, AKS cluster would block all the inbound traffic from the internet to the cluster to assure network security. So deployed workloads in Kubernetes are by default not accessible by anyone, but those inside the cluster. So to expose the application, to the outside world, we need to open specific ports and forward them to the services that are hosted inside the AKS, right? So the configuration of ports and port forwarding in Kubernetes is different from what you might be used to in other environments. So on, let's say on a VM, we'll configure the firewall to allow inbound traffic to port 443 and it would allow the HTTPS web traffic. But in a Kubernetes, the control plane manages the network configuration based on the declarative in instructions that we provide so if you want to go in depth onto the networks in kubernetes i would request you to please go through the documentation and then come back and watch this video again so i have to again create this service manifest file right so i would do touch service dot yaml I would again open up the editor and this is my deployment. I would go to service.yaml, which is, you know, empty, right? Let me add some code here. This is what I mentioned, right? So we, I have to define how the service will behave in this specification section of the manifest file. So I mentioned the behavior and the type key to the cluster IP here. All right, now I define the ports the service will group and provide coverage by adding a selector section. So it will cover the Contoso website and the ports that would be open would be 80 and the target port would be HTTP that is also 80. The name is this protocol is TCP, right? So this is the port forwarding by adding the ports section to this manifest file. So the, by this, the service would accept all the TCP request on port 80 and forward the request to HTTP target port for all ports matching the selector value. Right, so save, close. Yes, I want to save the changes. Now I would apply this manifest file. dash f service dot yaml created you can now I have to create an ingress manifest as well 
by doing this touch ingress.yaml okay this is my yaml file I go to my YAML, this is empty. And I update the code here. So this is an ingress file. And I am adding the HTTP application routing. This is my path. Service name is this, service port is this, right? To, I'm doing this to expose the website to the internet or, or to the world via DNS, right? So to do this, I have to create an ingress controller. This is the job of the ingress controller to expose my website to the internet via DNS. Right, so I have to save, close, save. I don't know why it is not saving it. I have to again again apply this manifest. I don't know what happened to that, right? So I'm gonna kubectl apply dash f the ingress dot yaml. V1 point available in the user networking. This okay. <clears throat> okay, so this I gave an I got an error. Wait, let me check it. I caught an error and that is why I'm not able to browse this. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, let me try again. I don't know why I'm getting this error. Okay, let me try and fix it. But you got the idea, right? So we created an AKS cluster, deploy the web application to the Kubernetes cluster. And when we deployed the web app, we used the Kubernetes declarative uh, paradigm to describe what we wanted to create. This way we can keep the app version history and make future deployment easily reprodu reproducible, right? After that, I will delete the resource group to make sure that I don't get charged extra. All right, so I hope this was informative for all of you guys. If you have any queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.